Ooh, that looks tasty. Oh, it was so fantastic. I'm telling you, it was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm buying drinks for everyone in the place. But, 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 this is an honor of cold drag because we're going to have those drinks where, you know, you, you, you take the, the smaller shot of a strong drink and you drop it in the, in the ale and you drink it all at once. Yes, those for everyone. What, why? Oh, fine, I'll tell you what happened. So, after Micah the eunuch gave us his, his advice, we, we raced off to the dungeon, trying to find the, the last member of, 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 of the, 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 the missing alliance. And so, in we go, and first thing cold drag does, is he charges a bugbear in the next room and falls right into a bit. Ploop. I don't know why you'd be surprised, because after all, cold drag is really not so much brain as he is earwax. Welcome, folks. Today, the Hunger Gamer is back with another game review. And today, we are talking about... Dungeon Alliance, designed by Andrew Parks, published by Quixotic Games, with art by Radio Studio and Biagio de Alessandro. And I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly. So before I jump in, please make sure you turn on your Klingon subtitles, because if I make any errors, that's where you will find the corrections. And I also need to say that, yes, you are correct. This is a gigantic mess that you're seeing on the table. It's not, this is usually what it looks like at the end of review rather than the beginning, and that's because I have just finished my playthrough series of Dungeon Alliance, which I did in conjunction with Meet Me at the Table. So it's a huge, big old mess, but that's okay because, well, I'm excited about it at the moment. I wanted to kind of jump in and do a quick review. Now, I'm also going to say that this particular review is going to be even lighter on the rules than normally I do because there is just so very much to this game. What Dungeon Alliance is, is it is a game in which each player will draft a set of four heroes and each of these heroes has their own unique statistics and their own unique starting cards. And that will be your alliance that you send into the dungeon and either you will be playing a competitive game where you are competing with another alliance to score the most points, i.e. get the most experience points, or you are playing a solo or cooperative mode, in which case you are working through and accomplishing quests, and then perhaps stringing it together as a campaign, which is four games put together in which you have an objective at the end, which is to be some kind of boss. And finally, what this here is, I was also playing through one of the adventure packs, which are these four different sets of cards that you shuffle into the decks that you draft, and as you go through, you draft those cards and they tell a story. Now, if you are not interested in how this game is played and just want to jump ahead to my final thoughts, then you want to move to the timestamp on the screen, right? Right? Now, for those of us still here, let's talk a little bit about how the game works. Now, I'm going to move this away, which has the final boss I fought, my poor dead Coldrack, and Melinda there, which was actually another room that I went to. And let's talk about what's going to happen after you have picked your heroes. So you will start actually on a single tile. I started right here. And as you go through, you will slowly be revealing different rooms of the dungeon. Depending on how many players you're playing with, it will determine how big the dungeon is. In a solo game, you play with a three by three dungeon. And as you go through and you open doors, there'll be choices of rooms that you can enter and you know what's on the room. So you can pick what's there and what you're going to be facing. So for example, this room here, there is some kind of a challenge token in there, which might be treasure, or in this case, a trap. And there will be some kind of monster. In this case, there is a Hydra. And there is a whole bunch of different monsters in the game. As you can see, all of these here are different types of monsters with different abilities and different stats. Though all of those basic stats are on the creature's little tokens themselves. And as you can see, your heroes are miniatures, which I've done a mediocre job of painting here, and your enemies are all just cardboard tiles. And the game is played over the course of four different rounds, and each round, each one of your heroes will activate once. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to have a variety of cards in your hand that you are able to play, and you'll see each one has a different keyword associated with it. But in general, you can play one of each type of card on your character each round in addition to doing a regular move and a regular attack. And you can see here, each character has their own individual stats of attack, their defense, their movement, and their health. And so what you're doing is you're playing those cards on your heroes in an attempt to kill the monsters 
or you're doing various quests. And as you can guess, success earns you experience points, which you are then able to use to level up your characters, because at the end of each and every round, what will happen is you will have a choice of five cards that you can draft upgrades from. So for example, if I wanted this card here, it would cost me four experience, and then this card would come into my hand, and it would be one that I can draw as I go through. Now you'll also notice these symbols over here because every different card is keyed to a different type of character. So only a character with those two symbols can use that particular card. Whereas something like this here could only be used by a gnome or an orc. While something like this could only be used by that specific character and you get the idea, or at least I hope you get the idea. Then after each player character has acted in the solo game, what'll happen is you'll do your draft and then you will look at the AI card, and the AI card will tell you what happens. It'll tell you the strongest creature moves, it's gonna get a plus one attack, and it's going to attack a fighter or a holy person. Or you have the choice, it can get a plus three on its attack and attack whatever you want. If you can't do that, you suffer the consequences at the bottom. If you're playing a competitive game, what then happens is the other player gets to activate one of the monsters and gets to try to come and kill you. And I will also say in the competitive game, you have the option of being able to fight each other in PvP or not. If one of your characters winds up getting completely killed, depending on the version of the game you're playing, either you wind up getting negative XP, which winds up being points at the end of the game, the competitive game, or if you're playing with the permadeath mode, the character is dead, it's gone. And if you're doing a campaign, you'll have to draft another one in between adventures. Now, I mentioned early on at the beginning that I had been playing through what is called one of the adventure packs. And I'm going to pick one card out of the adventure pack, which I will show now, so it might be a little bit of a spoiler. As you go through, you wind up with options of cards that you are able to draft. And those cards will tell you to look at various cards in the adventure pack deck, and then you pull those out, and they'll all usually have some kind of story and some kind of challenge that you're gonna do and completing it will get you campaign tokens, which you use in the campaign to draft permanent upgrades to your deck, all the stuff you drafted, you can keep some, and it's also the overall win condition as well. And as you kind of go through, you wind up getting more and more of these that are harder or less challenging, but you have to draft them just like you would a normal card. So you're kind of faced with a choice of, do I want to pursue the story objective or do I want to just draft something that helps you right now? And again, the adventure packs are played out over four games and they end with you fighting one of the big bosses, the one that I just did. I wound up facing off against this Titan right here. And that's it. That is the extreme basics of the game. Now, what do I like about this game? So first of all, I love creating the alliances. There are, if you have the expansion, there are, I think, 19 or 20 different characters that you can choose from, and they all synergize very differently because what you're doing, you're drafting characters kind of based off of these different abilities that they have, and that's going to determine what it is that you're able to draft and actually use as you play through the game. And for me, that's just a big part of the fun. And along with that, you have these little bits of stories so you kind of get a feel for who the character is. You can kind of create your own narrative along with that. And I just, I like it. And even though each character only has three cards that come with it, and you wind up with a whole bunch of cards in your deck at the end of the game, they feel very well developed and I really I just really enjoy that I have already developed characters that I really like and I want to play because I like them and others that I don't like them as much but I'll play them because they're powerful and I just think that's great and also along with that you can really develop your own play style so I love that part of the game I will also say that I really appreciate the card play of this game Gloomhaven is often called the a Euro dungeon crawler but to me Dungeon Alliance is the true Euro dungeon crawler because there's even less luck in this game than there is in Gloomhaven. In Gloomhaven, you're still flipping those cards for bonuses and things like that. There are, to my knowledge, three different enemies that will roll a single die, which is a zero, one, two, or three, which randomizes their damage a little bit. And there is, I believe, one card that the heroes can get where you roll a die. And that's out of 
all of this. That, those numbers might be wrong, but pretty much that is it. Even when it comes to unlocking chests and unlocking secret doors and stuff, you can take a chance and roll the die to try to do it, or you can just take the time and use your movement to open those things. So you can take almost all of the chance out of the game, and I really appreciate that. I think the way the card play is done with these are the things that you can play, but then you have the ability to do what's called a burst of strength, where you just take two cards and basically you discard them, and that gives you a bonus to your attack, or it lets you heal, or it lets you move a little bit more, or it lets you play a second card of a certain keyword. It just gives you just that little bit of variety and option, and that just really, to me, makes this game really pop and really cook. I think the way the drafting system is done is very clever. They're there, but they're cycling through fairly quickly, so you're never just stuck without anything up there. The two things that I like the most about this game are, one, the way the AI works. It is very easy to read. It's very clean. It's very simple. You know what's coming again. You see this before your turn even starts, so you know what's going to happen, so you can plan, and it just really is fantastic. I have never once had a complaint about the way the AI works. It is fantastic. But the thing to me, as someone who plays the this kind of game almost exclusively solo or co-op, are the adventure packs. They took this game from being a good game that's interesting to play as kind of a one-off, because when you're not using the adventure pack, you're you're setting up at the beginning how many of the quests you need to beat, and then you're kind of setting how many points, how many experience points you're going to try to get by the end of the game, which is fine. But the adventure packs make this thing a kind of a sprawling feeling campaign that has a fascinating story that you're slowly getting pieced out because you have to choose to pursue a lead. You see something in the dungeon, you have to pursue it, which is just awesome because now you're making choices to get your story, and I love that. And you're having to make choices of, do you want to pursue this thing and get campaign tokens, or do you just want to buff yourself up? Do you want to pursue something that might unlock something that maybe you didn't have access to, or do you just, but that's going to take a lot more effort, or do you just want to go jump in, throw that card away, and move on? And I, it's fantastic. It has decent story in there, and I really think it makes this game sing as a solo or co-op game, potentially with one other player. And really, just to reiterate the adventure packs, to me, take this game from a solid B, B-plus solo co-op experience to an A, without question. I really, really enjoy it. And I will also say, I think as a competitive game against one other player, I think also this is a very fun, interesting game. Whether you do it with PvP or not with PvP, it really creates for some interesting dynamics as the other player is sending the monsters about and you're sending monsters after them. And I just, I think it is a, a really clever take on doing a competitive dungeon crawl experience and one that I have not seen out there before, a really, truly competitive dungeon crawl. And I think the base game without the adventure packs is a very clever, worthwhile, competitive game. Again, I'm going to say with one other player, which brings me to my quibbles with the game. The first one is, this is a long game. Like, it doesn't seem like it should be because at the end of the day for a regular game, you're going to play each of your characters activates four times, 16 activations. You're going to spend two hours, two and a half hours on a game, period, every single time. So just keep that in mind. And that's why I have said playing a co-op with one other player or playing competitive with one other player is why I say that. Because as with all games, the more players you have, the longer the game is going to take. And I just know I haven't tried it, to be fair, but I have no desire to try this game at four players. It just seems like it would take all day. And that's not really what I'm looking for. I'd rather play this solo or two players and play three games in the time it would take to play one. My next quibble with the game is the setup and teardown is long. Now, I've taken some time and tried to organize my thing pretty well, but it just, it takes a long time. It's going to take you half an hour to set it up. It's going to take me 20 minutes to put it away, and that's just how it is. So just something to keep in mind. This is not a quick setup or play. It's a long, crunchy, crunchy game. And then the last thing that I'm just going to point out, I've already alluded to it, really to me, to really get the 
best experience out of this game. You need to have the base game. You need to have some of the adventure packs. And honestly, you should probably get the expansion too, because the expansion comes with this kind of deeper dungeon place where you can go, and it adds so much. It lets you add two more turns to the game to have a big slugfest final boss battle. And you just you don't have that. You still get to fight bosses in the regular game, but it's not... It's not the same. It's not as thematic. It's not as fun. And in addition to that, the expansion comes with this deck of many treasures, which gives you a little more choices if you want a little more of that randomness. In the base game, when you open up a chest, you just get some experience. That's done. But if you have the expansion, now you can dig deeper and you can start going through and seeing what else is in this deck of many treasures. And it might be something good. It might be more treasure. Or you might wind up with another trap that you didn't expect, or it could be a, a mimic or whatever it is, and it just it adds so much. So the point is, to really make this game sing, you kind of need all of it, which makes it a little bit more expensive. It's not hugely expensive because the only minis you have are for the heroes, and all of the massive amount of monsters are all these little tiles here, which for the record, I think are great. I love these tiles. I didn't say that before, but I really appreciate they're easy to read. They have some art on there. They go down quickly. Great. And then the last thing I'm going to put in the quibbles is, again, it's not really a quibble, but just keep in mind that this is truly a Euro experience. It is puzzly, and you're trying to figure out the best way to use your cards to make something happen. You're not rolling dice to do your damage. It is not an Amera-style game at all all. And again, it's just something to keep in mind. It is a Euro style game. It's long, puzzly, and crunchy. And so if you're used to things like Zombicide or one of my favorites, Wander, something like that, that's what you were really looking for. This is not going to be the game for you. This is one of the crunchiest, heaviest games that I have. And that's why I didn't spend a lot of time going through how to play because it would have taken me 27 hours to do it. But just, again, keep that in mind. This is a heavy, crunchy game. If that's not what you're looking for, this is not the dungeon crawl for you. But there you have it, folks. That is Dungeon Alliance. This is a game that I was lukewarm on it when I first got it because I didn't have the expansion. There were no adventure packs. And I thought it was fine. And honestly, I was a little disappointed in it because it took me a few games to really figure out what was going on. But with the addition of those adventure packs, this game sings to me. I think it's fantastic as a solo co-op game with those adventure packs. So there you have it, folks. If I made any mistakes in the very few rules that I did explain at the beginning, please let me know in the comments with the timestamp. We'll get to that into the Klingon subtitles. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.